everybody. So we are so excited. We are here for our next month of Obscure Animation. And we're talking about a really special, fun film. Uh, we're talking about Cats Don't Dance. And my friend Stanford is here to talk about it with me. Hi, Rachel. How's it going? Yeah. Hi. I'm so excited to talk about this film. I had never seen it before uh, talking about this. I'd heard about it from friends and saying it was way underrated and whatever. And so it was really fun to, to watch it. Yeah, I'm so glad you got to see it. I I saw it back in 1997 when it first came out, and actually, and I saw it, I've only seen it once up yeah. until up until now. So it oh, was really, really really fun to rewatch it. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so this movie, uh, just to give some background, was made in 1997, as you said. It was distributed in 1997, and it's kind of interesting because it. I think part of the reason why it may be underperformed at the box office is that it was in like. A weird spot as far as distribution because uh turner it was the last last anime film for turner feature animation right and uh and and then it got, so it got distributed by warner brothers but that's always sort of weird i feel like i feel like whenever that happens you always get sort of a half-hearted effort mm -hmm. <laughs> from the part of the distributors yeah in fact i mean it was a long time ago i don't remember great marketing for this movie you know yeah. and so i think that that could have been part of it probably what many attributed to it is that it just didn't yeah it was caught in a weird time i believe that that warner brothers and turner were merging at that time is that what you had, had heard I think so and yeah that sound right i don't I want to get my facts straight but i think that's why it was released under the warner brothers family entertainment label but yeah i think it just kind of got lost yeah so problem. Uh, yeah, their I mean their big thing I guess Turner was the um, uh, they had the um, the rights to Hanna Bar Hanna Barbera I guess was their big thing. Yeah, I'm seeing and and so yeah it was largely absorbed into Warner Brothers and uh, so uh, yeah so it's just uh, things like Scooby Doo, Flintstones, uh, Yogi Bear stuff like that were. Um, uh, or Turner, I guess, and now now you know that the Warner Brothers does all the distribution, merchandising, all that fun stuff. So uh, that I think that was their main their main theme, and we I guess we have to thank for for them these atrocious Tom and Jerry, <laughs> Tom and Jerry <laughs> films. Oh dear. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so Castro Dance, and it was a. Uh, Directed by uh, by Mark Dindal, and uh, he's an interesting case uh, because he did the Emperor's New Groove, which uh, I think I remember when it first came out and I heard about it. I was just like, "That sounds like the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life," and it actually ended up being really funny. And I remember seeing it in the theater and just being like, "Wow, that was way better than I expected it to be," and uh, and so I think that surprised a lot of people. And he did this, which is sort of, I don't know if you'd say this is a cult hit, but it's, its I know a lot of people who yeah, really like it. I think it's got a bit of a cult following. And I wonder too, if it's people who also, who saw it as kids, you know, and really mm -hmm. loved it as a kid. And then it's one of those that I think could hold up well, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in that regard. Yeah. And um, so uh, he, so he had those two, two films and then he got, stuck directing chicken little which yeah. is just such a mess of a movie and it's such a uh, i don't know we'll, we'll we'll probably end up reviewing that for uh for disney yeah month, but it they tried a lot of stuff and it was experimental but it, it just is so mean-spirited and i i i i don't know like and he hasn't really done anything since you gotta yeah, feel kind of bad anything. for him yeah in fact somebody you know, I follow some different people in the animation industry on social media and somebody ran into Mark. I'm trying to even remember who it was, Rachel, but it was like last week. Oh, yeah. They ran into Mark Dindle at a restaurant and they, and they took a selfie with him. Oh. And, and so he's alive. Oh, that's good. And I almost wanted to reply. Not this person would even know me. Like, what's Mark Dindle doing? Oh, no. gonna, I'm going to be talking about this with Rachel. <laughs> Because he was gonna do that, um, that what was it called, Shadow Men or Shadow? 
um oh, for, for dreamworks yeah but that then me it and, didn't be in my shadow was me in my shadow project, yeah that project oh interesting and, okay. yeah and then i guess it, that didn't end up going like yeah, most, that... most most promising dreamworks projects it got scrapped oh, no. <laughs> that always gets scrapped. Oh, exactly that doesn't sound the coolest but always the ones that don't yeah. get made and then they make trolls right and trolls too yeah. yeah yeah so i it's a shame and hopefully he can find his way back because uh he i really don't think that chicken little was his fault and uh and he made two pretty good films so yeah i think he's got a, a real touch with with comedy yeah. and and uh i know we can talk about this too hopefully if we get a chance to talk about the emperor's new groove but yeah he had to come in and i think save that project because you know that could have yeah, been trouble with production and because uh, roger allers was originally yeah and it was going to yeah. be a much more serious tone and you know yeah more, more serious in tone etc but um anyway he uh yeah i think i think he's a talented director so it is it's interesting uh, hopefully he's been able to <laughs> you know ha have a happier life doing some other <laughs> hopefully. <things. laughs> hopefully yeah so what was your sort of overall response to to watching it this time this movie capstone Day? well you know it was it was very similar to what i had i remember thinking about it in 1977 so th there's there's much to like uh yeah. the musical numbers are delightful and and fun characters fun character design uh i love classic hollywood yeah you know it just it, uh no, kind of like the mythical Hollywood because we know that it doesn't necessarily exist, but just but how fun how fun that is. So so there, there's lots of like um, I, I have a few issues with some things, yeah. but but uh, you know which we can talk about. But but you know it's it, it, it's a fun film. Yeah, I was really impressed by it. I found it really charming, and yeah, I mean the the plot is is very standard <laughs> i was kind of thinking like this is like la la land but with animals <laughs> with, I know. With better talking song, animals better yeah. songs <laughs> um no but uh, oh, yeah. Songs are really fun. Yeah. um but i i think i know this is a bold statement but i think this is randy newman's best music that he's ever done like I don't know. I think these songs are super catchy, and like I mean, the the songs of Princess and the Frog are, are there's like two or three that are really good, and then the rest are kind of. Eh. But I don't. I feel like almost every single one of these songs is like super catchy. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Randy Newman did did very good work on this on this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I was really impressed by that, and I, don't know, I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good, and yeah, it's not perfect. We'll talk about some things, but um, but uh, but yeah, it it's uh, it's just really sweet and fun. And I think it definitely just really love. So so basically, so we start out. We're just gonna kind of go through the this this is very spoilery of course. So spoilers. So, yeah. <laughs> so watch the movie and then come watch this. But yeah. um. Uh, we're just going to go through the uh, the story uh, in this podcast, kind of a little different. Maybe we've done some of the other ones and talk about each of the songs. And we're even going to play some clips from each of the songs and uh, and talk about talk about them because it just seemed like the standout of this movie to me, and it seemed like it would be the best use of our time. And so hopefully, we'll kind of as we sort of go through the story, we'll kind of talk on some of those positives and negatives as we go through. But uh, but yeah, the the songs by were by Randy Newman, the score by Steve Goldstein. So they did a, a I think a pretty darn good job. I did too. I think they did nice work on this movie. Yeah. So the setup is you have uh, Darla is a sort of a, a fairy tale setup that you have. Yeah, which is kind of an interesting way to start the movie, isn't it? Because it's yeah. it is a fairy. It's it is kind of a fairy tale set in modern era in in the golden age of Hollywood. But anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh darla is the uh kind of the that was presented as this princess and yeah. uh, you know living in this pampered world and she's even got products that are named you know that are designed after her and everything darla she's, Dibble, she's a movie star <laughs> yeah she's like shirley temple right yeah, right <laughs> and then you have danny 
who's a cat anthropomorphic uh he is the peasant with a dream and of hollywood and uh that's from when we, kokomo indiana right yeah. isn't that where he goes from it, yeah it's so funny there are so many movies set in indiana it's like that because i served my mission there and so like now i i noticed that it was like if uh, if hollywood wants to make something about uh, middle america they always pick almost always pick indiana there's like indiana. and hoosiers and and uh yeah <laughs> there's tons stranger <laughs> things is set in indiana uh, there's a That's lot <laughs> and so here yeah so yeah. he's from kokomo indiana He's on the bus to Hollywood, and that's when we get our first song called Our Time Has Come. And I'm not sure who's singing. Yeah, I don't know who's singing these opening credits either, and I meant to write that down, you know, when I watched the end credits. Yeah. But these, these opening credits are so cool. Yeah. I love how they've integrated the names into the, you know, to the buildings and the yeah. different, the different structures. I kind of have how they give Natalie Cole a, a credit about this, but not Scott Bakula. But we can talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah, they throw out. They have a lot of sign humor in this movie. Yeah. Um, they do a good job with that. It feels very 1997. It does. As far as the song. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> Which it's it's kind of fun, maybe a yeah. little out of place, just a little. But it's who cares, you know? It's yeah. just fun. It sets the, it sets the tone. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's really fun. It kind of makes reminds me a little bit of the Goofy movie. I think this opening yeah yeah credit uh, sequence. And I really like the way the animation uses shadow. Oh, I love it too. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we get to meet Pudgy. Yeah, a cute go. Pudgy. <laughs> he's a fun. He's a fun sidekick. Okay, so there you go. That's the first song. It's the song, and uh, and then we pretty quickly get. Uh, he arrives in Hollywood. He meets Pudge, who's this cute little penguin, and uh, the the setup is kind of that uh, this this world is. That the, the animals are kind of looked down upon. Yeah, second class world. citizens in a way, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of maybe somewhat similar to like what you had in Roger Rabbit. Yeah, you know, it's reminiscent of Roger Rabbit. Yeah, definitely. And so Danny gets there, and uh, he he says he says the most impossible dream can come true if you believe it, and uh, that's when we get the next song this is just called danny's arrival song danny's arrival song <laughs> i think it's one of my favorite well it's kind of hard to do but this is this is a favorite yeah this one's really fun Since I was a little kitten, so I had a dream. scott bacula who's the voice of danny the dancing cat yeah is, i think he's terrific i think he's so got, too i mean i, I didn't had, know he could sing i had I, no idea either back i mean back in 97 i didn't know he could sing and and he just he just aces it yeah, I mean, yeah. who? He's the guy on Quantum Leap, right? Yeah, he's the Quantum Leap guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knew? And he's got yeah, just a great voice and uh, such an such a fun, optimistic song, you know. Yeah. So appropriate for his character, and I love his character design too. Again, just how he's just got the greatest smile, you know. Uh, yeah. Just how it works with the we'll work with that stylized cat face. Well, and whereas like the first song is very like '90s, um, this yeah. is classic. I feel this like. is classic 1940, 1950 yeah. MGM musical. You know? Yeah. And and it's really fun to see like the all the backgrounds. You got the. Um, the oh. Chinese theater, yeah. you have the signs, and this is where you get the Gone with the Wind, Gone with the Wind. poster. Yeah. Really fun. And uh, they do have a lot of really fun poster art in this. Uh, I know, I love the poster art. Uh, all these fun uh, scenes in Hollywood, 
I know, and again, kind of this very idealized Hollywood. Yeah. And I love how everything sparkles. And you've got um, uh, Laurel and Hardy and- Yeah, Drew. Mae West. Mae West, yeah. It's fun. And uh, brown, the Brown Derby yeah. is, is fame. I think that's where they invented the Cobb salad, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. <laughs> and here's funny, it's on the, you know, one of those Los Angeles red car trolleys. Yeah. And we're also getting to meet Sawyer a little bit in this yeah. segment. And she, she's she's very like, I think Debbie Reynolds singing in the rain kind of. Absolutely. Character. Yeah. Definitely. Which is so Definitely. fun. Mm -hmm. this, this movie really does remind me a lot of singing in the rain. Mm -hmm. Well, and Gene Kelly supposedly consulted on this film. Did you oh, see did that in really? the final credits? I, I, they, I did. They, they uh, dedicated the film to him. Mm. And then I had, I had read in uh, again just doing some prep for this that that he consulted on the film i don't know exactly what he did mm. but but i have my theories you know based yeah. on <laughs> on seeing the film but that <laughs> that that is a delightful musical number it's yeah. short, but it's just i think it just it just launches the film in such a fun happy way yeah it does it just it's joyful it's energetic it's got yeah. great lighting the way it uses oh, everything's kind beautiful. of sparkles which is really fun and basically like danny finds an agent and and the agent says he's gonna sign him to work on this project little archangel and uh with sawyer <laughs> and sawyer's upset because she he had just gotten her all wet and everything she doesn't she thinks he's not not very great and um uh it turns out that being in this in this uh play in the i mean in this movie isn't all that it's cracked up to be and this is where we get our first introduction of darla and i don't know this sort of but in this introductory part of the movie like how, do you feel like that's sort of the strength of the movie or do you think how do you feel about that like I think that the, it it has a the film has a really strong opening for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And, I agree. Um, I I think there 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 are uh, kind of like three major strong points. The opening being one, and then I can tell you about the other ones when, when we get there. Yeah. I don't. I think that this scene with that where we where we introduce Darla, who's the villain of the movie, uh -huh. is you know I, I think it's fun. I I, I don't love. Darla, I don't, I don't love the whole villain plot. Okay, but all right, but uh, we'll talk. We'll say yeah, we, yeah, I'll yeah. be interested to, to, to explore it with you. Okay, great. But, yeah, it's fun. So let's um, hear Darla's song. One thing I appreciate with Darla is that they actually have a voice actor voicing her. They didn't get like Bette Midler, you know, to voice it. Um, and I think that she's actually a pretty good singer. Like it's in this belt kind of yeah. style, but it's actually, this song is actually pretty well sung, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think so too. I, I, I like the, I, I guess they had a different acting and singing voice for Darla and I think they're both good. Yeah, I agree. They keep, they, keep, they keep her standing as, you know, again, she's Shirley Temple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So this is, yeah, Little Boat on the Sea is what it's called. Okay. But, um, and this has like a real sort of old school Bugsy Berkeley yeah, kind Bugsy of Berkeley, feel absolutely. to it, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. And I mean, it is definitely a villain we've seen a lot, like looks really cute, but is actually, you know, conniving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that kind of, you feel like it's a little tired or? You know, actually, um, I mean, it's a little tired and because we find out too that she's, I was wondering, you know, I, I was thinking about this in 97 too. It was, I was wondering if Darla was perhaps again, like Judge Doom was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that she's, oh, okay. she, she wasn't necessarily a little girl, you know, that she right. was something else, but it turns out that she is a little girl. It's just a horrible, just a horrible person. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I, um, well, really, what I don't really like about the whole Darla plot, well, I mean, I think it is a bit tired. I don't really like, um, Max, her bodyguard. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, I mean, this is so nitpicky. And how can you, you know, I hope your viewers will forgive me, but I'm just being honest. Um, <laughs> I I think he's just, 
you know, no other human in the movie is his size, right? I mean, he kind of looks like he's like a Frankenstein ape is what he looks like. Yeah. He's just gigantic. It's and he's constantly punching through buildings and doing all this stuff. And you see, I mean, he's formidable and she needs, she needs someone big to, to, to be the bad, I mean, you know, to, to protect her and to do her right. evil deeds, right? Right. But that i don't know the whole the whole construct didn't really it didn't really work for me i think just because i enjoyed so much more the true musical portions of it right and then this i mean it's a cartoon i'm not i'm not, I'm not trying to make it something that is not but i just i i i, I just never like i just yeah. didn't like the villain and I, I mean i didn't like darla and i definitely didn't like max yeah. yeah i was kind of glad though that they didn't try to like have her be redeemed at the end that was kind of me nice. too oh yeah. i was thrilled that she was, wasn't that they didn't redeem her at the end either but again i just kept waiting her for for her to be <laughs> something else you know like yeah. oh, by the way i'm a hundred year old woman you know what i mean <laughs> this is when we get introduced to all the other animals there's yes. tilly cranston francis tw and they all uh they all have small roles and uh and danny's kind of upset by this he's sort of affronted by this and uh that's when he uh he sings for them a- animal jazz and i think this is a a really really good number animal jazz is i think my favorite number love this scene and one of the things i really love about it too rachel is that this to me just seems like it's pure gene kelly this looks like you're watching singing in the rain you know or some yeah. other I mean, the way that they the way that they frame and the, the characters and they, you know, they show their full bodies yeah. and, and, how they, and how they stage it all. And this s- whole sequence is like so Randy Newman. Yes. Too. Like, yeah. you know, he's a jazz guy. And uh, so you really feel that uh, coming, coming out on him. It's probably the most of any. It's really fun. Yeah, I'm with you. It's just, it brings out the best, of, in, you know, Randy Newman's musical style. Yeah. But seriously, don't you feel like you're watching Singing in the Rain? Yeah. The way, that, the way that they put this together. It's really, I love the layers of the background and, yeah. and uh, just the movement of the animation is great. And uh, it's just really, really fun. I mean, think of like similar, uh, I don't know, sequences like Trash in the Camp. Uh, yeah. And, and that's just not as as effective, I don't think, as this. And yeah, this this really wins. Like yeah. even just listening to it now, I'm kind of going back and forth, and you can't, you just want to dance to it. It's so fun and uh, so expressive. I love when they get Danny just smiling, and yeah. uh, <laughs> and then we do get a little of Darla. Yeah, I can Darla. see what you mean about uh, about her bodyguard. Is Max? It's, it's Max. He is huge. <laughs> and again, aren't these animal characters all just delightful? Yeah, they are so fun. Yeah. I love the turtle. <laughs> and all the I rest did... of the animals are basically to scale, you know, like yeah. the, the I mean that's one thing I liked in, in um Zootopia is that you had all of the animals basically being to scale. Like yeah. he was if he could... a little little uh um, bunny. You know, I think it makes a difference too. And again, that's one of the reasons why, for me, for me, Max really pulls me out of it. Yeah, but, I can see that. But uh, I can see that. This is just pure delight. Mm-hmm. And then I love I love this part where they bring they bring uh, Sawyer in, because again, I'm just picturing, you know, Gene Kelly and. Yeah. Debbie Reynolds <laughs> you know, dancing yeah. together, or Gene Kelly and Sid Charisse. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's almost this Sid Charisse kind of yeah. moment. <laughs> it, all, it also kind of has a little bit of a feel of the Aristocats. Yeah. You know, the way that yeah, that with movie... jazz. Jazz and the way that movie uses color blocks uh-huh. in the jazz sequences. I think that it, you feel a little bit of that. <laughs> And 
and I, I kind of I appreciate that Sawyer's not just the sort of the dumb female character. Yeah, like, I, I think Sawyer's a great character. Yeah, she's fun. Isn't the lighting great in this sequence yeah. too? I know we've talked about that, but it's just it it just looks so great. Just think the animators just took so much care with this. Mm -hmm. Because everybody likes to say that, oh, we're like Looney Tunes. We're like you know, I'm like, no. Like most <laughs> of them are not. And this actually does have some of the like some of the dynamics, some of the the way that that your classic Looney Tunes shorts were were done. The, the, the way the slapstick is done, the way the lighting is done, the way the animation looks, yeah. I think is very reminiscent of old school animation, which is oh, really yeah. fun. It's like, it's like this wonderful hybrid between, uh, you know, old school, you know, hand-drawn animation and, and uh, MGM Hollywood musicals, you know? Yeah. And, uh, they just they uh, they just they just do that so well. I just really feel like that animal <laughs> jam, animal jazz scene is just a total high point of the film. Yeah, and I uh, we did have I forgot we did have a couple comments on um I, on my from my Twitter about people about this movie. Um, just animated antic says love cats don't dance. Such a shame. It doesn't have enough attention nor a Blu-ray release. And if any film could be benefited from Blu-ray release, it is this. This one. That's sure. a crime that it is yeah. that one. Yeah, it is too bad. Thankfully, it's on, you know, I, was, I rented it on uh, I, Apple iTunes. Yeah. And, and thank goodness, you know, that it's available. And you can purchase it too. Yeah. But, It'd uh, just be nice to have that high def. Yes, exactly. For this, for this animation. Yeah. Um, my friend Conrado Falco says, totally underrated movie. Mark Dindle was a great animator animator director it's sad his career was so clearly undone by chicken little a legitimately terrible movie but this and emperor's new groove both are really good so yeah we can both agree there for sure so this is right when after animal jazz is when darla becomes upset with danny and uh and this is when we get her singing big and loud and uh this is a shorter clip Darla's got a diabolical plot to take out the, to take out the animals. Yes, Big and Loud's a fun number. It's almost like I feel like it's it was almost a little too short. I know that there's a reprise, yeah, in it, but but uh, basically, like she uh, is is conniving that she's going to find a way to sort of embarrass uh, the animals and make them look bad. Uh, because she doesn't want them taking getting any more lines or getting any bigger part in her movie and uh, so big and loud I mean it's obviously kind of supposed to be a play on words because she's obviously not big <laughs> um, and everybody thinks that she's not loud but she is loud um, and uh, and it's it's pretty pretty fun and very well sung I think oh absolutely yeah and so you know, animated in a great you know very stylistic and yeah. great homage to you know to hollywood as well as just using the medium of animation in, in a great in a great way yeah i mean i can almost picture someone like um carol channing or someone like yes. that singing this kind of song yeah so there she is darla dimple america's sweetheart not <laughs> Uh, Indiana. 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 Aren't her curls something too? I mean, yeah. Yeah, his. I love that shadow. And then you get to this, yeah, she's on the big cake. Yeah. It almost feels like Aladdin. 
Yeah. 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 In this. And again, just an homage to those incredible musical numbers, you know, you get at the golden age of MGM musicals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Carla's playing. She's going to get them on the stage. She's going to try to embarrass them, and she's going to flood the stage, and uh, and then uh, they'll be the, the all the production people will be really upset because they're wasting all this money and all this time and everything like that. And she ends up getting all of the uh, the animals uh, banned from the movies. So it's it's pretty pretty interesting and. Um, and that's when Sawyer is very upset. And uh, it's, this is our second to last song we'll profile, but um, she sings Tell Me Lies because she, in her eyes, uh, this, is, this is our, uh, our, our disappointed La La Land moment where <laughs> you know, all these dreams that, uh, that Danny talked about uh, in her eyes were all just a bunch of lies. Yeah, and, then, and Danny too, he's... He's devastated, and so he's going back. He's going back to Kokomo. Right, right. And uh, so this this is uh, so great. And this uh, is definitely very old school. Oh, uh, it almost reminds me of um, uh, of sort of Motown a little bit. In yeah, you could do Gladys Knight singing this song. And you know, I'm not a huge Natalie Cole fan. But yeah. I think that this was a really good song for her voice, and it's 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 a great it's it's really a, it's it's a nice number. I think she does a nice job here uh, yeah. with this with this song. It just like I said has a classic kind of Motown feel. Well, and again, I love how this is animated too because you can just see this you can just see this in a Hollywood musical too. Mm -hmm. uh, the and, way it uses sort of the rain yes, and the blues and, and the flashback kind of things done in reflection and yeah really really fun yeah it's just it's just it's beautiful maybe something in his eyes just see we're gonna go see danny who's packing it up <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, he's so sad. <laughs> Look at this shot, too. Isn't it just great? And how I just love how Sawyer's there, this kind yeah. of uh, superimposed on you know, on the scene, mm -hmm. on the city. It's really yeah. pretty. And the neon, and uh, and a lot of these are like real places. Yeah, they're real places. Pinkies, Lone Star. Yeah, just the uh, highly, highly stylized, and oh, there's the Brown Derby the again. White with the Wizard of Oz playing. Yeah. Brown Derby, like I said, is a real place. And this is really cool how they're using the lights, the spotlights, you know? Yeah. And I feel like you've gotten to know both these characters enough. Right. That, like, they, they feel authentic. Uh, it does. This feels very authentic to me, yeah. too. And, you know, here, for, you know, we contrast the opening scene when the Chinese theater is just so sparkling and beautiful. And then mm -hmm. he does this where it's just so sad. I mean, when I look at it in comparison to something like Sing, which is somewhat similar, which I don't hate, it's fine, but um, that has so many characters that they try to develop. Yeah. You never get the heart that you do for either of these yeah. two characters. Yeah, this is the right amount of characters, I think, too, because the supporting characters in it are fine. Yeah, it's just like, little it's like, bits. Yeah. So, I, it's, it's fun. Yeah, there's Pinkies. And I love this, too, because she... She figures out that she's 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 gonna believe in this dream still, 
and how the rain stops and the sky starts to clear. Yeah. It's, it's you know, just what you want in a Hollywood musical, right? Yeah, it really is. Uh, so so we get that uh, scene so Danny almost leaves uh, but then he comes up with this new plan that they're going to basically storm Darla's screening of Little Archangel and uh, and then they're going to uh, you know get the production team to see that they're valuable and everything like that and uh, that's when we get our our last song uh, yeah nothing is going to stop us now before the last song though before yeah. i get not just to be mr down here no you're again, fine just back to my primary complaint about just how i feel about this movie is there's this i mean it's probably not that long right so maybe what maybe 10 minutes or less where mm-hmm. darla darla sees that the that the cat you know that danny is back and he's he's up to something backstage at her premiere and so she sends max after him who then promptly punches holes in the Chinese theater and have, they have to have this big, this yeah. big day scene. And again, I know it's a cartoon, but I just think, what is this giant ape man doing in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, know, I know there's got to be a villain and there's got to be some hard things to overcome, but I, I sure... Yeah, you don't like yeah. the eight man. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't like it. I don't <laughs> that's, like it. That's, that's my fine. primary complaint. I understand that. I understand that. Uh, but I do kind of like that. Like, so everything that she does uh, is like stuff that's there on the stage. Like, it feels kind of like in this. In that, we'll talk about it when we watch the song. But, but uh, I, mean, I kind of this, yeah. Like she's this throwing works like for me. she's throwing like gels from lights and stuff like that like <laughs> yeah. things like that uh, and they come off as like beautiful like parts of the like intentional parts of the show right yeah everything <laughs> that she tries to do just ends up like people are like yay woo! i know which which, is really which works so much better for me than the 10 minutes of max chasing danny yeah on the roof of the chinese theater and, and then on the giant darla balloon you know yeah but yeah yeah i mean i think I, I don't think this movie is perfect for me. If I was going to say, if there's a problem, it's that not all the humor, I guess, really works. And it is just fairly predictable and pedestrian as far as the mm-hmm. story. But uh, I think that it, it executes that story, that formula, I think pretty well. And is, uh, is really enjoyable. I mean, it, it just seems like that we rarely get, movies like this that have so much heart and so much uh artistry to them that i uh, i don't know that just feel in this world where it seems like 90 percent of what we get are sequels and yeah. things like that like this just feels like something from an era that we hardly ever get anymore mm-hmm. you know i think i think setting the film too in that time period was such a good choice yeah. you know it's such a fun uh it's just, just there's so much uh allure about it and and uh that i think makes it so original too mm-hmm. yeah yeah stop us now and this song's a real barn burner again yeah it doesn't really sound like a classic hollywood number but who cares it's just fun you know it's just just, just delightful <laughs> yeah i mean and they really were able to kind of mix 90s contemporary broadway and jazz i think pretty effectively in here yeah it, absolutely yeah it, it works it doesn't feel sort of all over the place <laughs> excuse me ladies and gentlemen if you would be so kind hmm. got someone very special here she's about to speak her mind yeah so here she goes here she goes trying to stop the... <laughs> yeah where, <laughs> where nothing goes right for her and everything everything goes right for the performers right yeah for Danny and for Sawyer you know they go by. Now get you. Oh. Say curiosity. 
Yeah, people have been like sitting on Scott Bakula. He is got a good singing voice. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrific. He's, he's holding his own with Natalie Cole. I know. Like I think this is a lot more effective finale than the finale of Sing. It just feels I mean I didn't hate that, but I just think this this is just more catchy. It's more yeah. uh, I don't know. There's just and they, they managed to not have it be a big dance number. <laughs> like, I think this totally dancing. works too. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a combination where it's super fun. It's Darla's, Darla's downfall, you know? Yeah. And uh, and then for me, it's a plus because Max is already out of the picture. Yeah. The audience responses are so funny too, you know, because they're all just delighted yeah. with everything that's happening. I love this. The, the granddaddy of all switches. <laughs> yeah. It kind of does. You can see Mark Dindle in this because it does sort of feel a little bit like the ending of Emperor's New Groove. It does. It really does. Uh, with yeah. climbing all over this that statue. Yeah. And all the potions. And just, yeah, the manic nature of it, but then yeah, yeah. it really works. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love how to, um, that's so much fun. Yeah. How Darla, Darla just gets, she, she hangs herself, you know? It's not yeah. like they are trying to take her down. She... When she, you know, she's screaming that she, she's the one who flooded the, the studio. Yeah, so she and, admits. And, that and, she and a microphone's right there. So yeah. everybody everybody hears it. Which is so classic. Singing in the rain. Singing in the yeah. rain, too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Which yeah. is really fun. And everything ends happy and everything ends pleasant. And I don't know, it's just a really joyful picture. It's really fun. And uh, I mean, there are a couple spots that maybe get a little slow. Uh, couple um parts but i don't know i just really enjoyed it i i was really charmed by it <laughs> and uh uh and i really didn't i guess i didn't really know what to expect and i didn't expect the music though to be that good and i guess i was expecting something kind of along the lines of something like the some of the don blues you know things which i can appreciate like something like a thumbelina i actually appreciate but it's not you know it's, it's i know it's not great but um, uh, but this I, is definitely a, a, st a step up above that for sure. Yes, absolutely, definitely. Uh, you know, high quality, high qu I think high quality animation, great vo great vocal talent, mm -hmm. and uh, really, you know, just an entertaining romp of a movie. Yeah. Uh, and I want just in most regards a really terrific homage to classic Hollywood musicals. I think so too. More movies like this. I I really yes. Uh, we Amen. need more movies that are really trying to be art and really trying to uh, to yeah. I don't know. To I mean, I think that I hopefully I like to think that everyone's trying to make a good movie, but uh, but this just is one of those movies that feels like art more than commerce, and I it's just so nice in animation because I think we lose that a lot. Oh, days so much it just seems like so yeah so many of these movies they're just cranked out for just yeah pure commerce and they're just the yeah no artistry seems like no care and maybe there is but it sure doesn't seem like it whereas this yeah. even though clearly i have some criticisms it I, I i totally agree with you it really feels like uh an artistic piece and then they really 
tried hard to make a good movie. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, the, there's a lot, there's a lot of heart in this film. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for talking about it. This was so fun. I enjoyed, yeah. you know, talking along with the songs. It was kind of, I did too. That was, that was really fun, Rachel. Great incredible. idea. Thank you. So, it, so uh, it'll be fun to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, where can people find you? Well, I'm on Twitter at Stanford Clark, and I also have a movie blog, which is moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And I'll put all that in the uh, description section. And make sure you check out our uh, discussion we had with Pocahontas this uh, month. That was really fun. And uh, we're going to be doing. Uh, and our next discussion will be about Big Hero 6, which we're excited uh, to talk about. And uh, yeah, we'll, if you have any suggestions for Obscure Animation, please let us know. Uh, and uh, we'd be happy. It's, it's more just sort of underrated things we think need a shout, a shout out. So let us know. We'd be happy to, to take a look at them. That would be a lot of fun. And um, so thanks again. You can find me at Rachel's Reviews here on iTunes or on YouTube. And uh, it's Smiley LDS Girl on social media. So please follow me there. And um, thanks so much. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you all next month. Thanks, Rachel. Always Bye. a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.